Good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and um, get started with our Bible study for tonight. We, we trust everybody is enjoying the warm weather. As you can see, I got my Navy stuff on tonight. I had Air Force on last week. Yes, encouraging you to pray for the, for the offspring. Um, pray specifically um, for the Sean that she has health issues. And um, pray for Clifford Jr. that God would bring him back safely and also on time. On time. I'm very con concerned with the on time piece. And so I ask that you pray for him. And, and yes, this is time of praying. Um, I don't have permission to share any names, but I have two co workers that have one with a family issue and, um, and one um, with a physical issue of himself. So we know it's time to continue to pray, to be on our guard, and also to be on our guard because we know that the governor and different ones are planning on opening things up and relaxing the mass concern. And so we want to continue, as the Bible said, to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. And what's interesting about that is that a serpent doesn't have eyelashes, I mean eyelids, so he's always eyes always open. And so God is telling us to always have our eyes open and always to be watching that we will continue to make the best decisions for our church and also for us as individuals. Because as you know, that our church can only be as strong as it can be when we have strong individuals. And so we want to continue to pray for each other, continue to pray for our um, people across the land. And also those that are joining us by way of Facebook and also by way of Zoom, I got one um, comment, one, um, um, the Leach family is asking for prayer for his family and also for his brother. And so we, 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 so we continue, to, God has continued to broaden our outreach towards not just our community, towards the world. And so I'm blessed that some people are tuning to our Bible study that are not, don't, ne don't necessarily go to a particular church. And so that doesn't make us better than them, but also that lets us know that we have to be on our job to share the good news of the gospel. So without any further ado, I'm going to ask that we turn it in our Bibles to the gospel as recorded by Matthew, as we want to continue on in our consideration of the Isle of Discourse. And again, we mentioned before that this is Jesus' last public discourse, not his public appearance but his last public discourse and he's talking and one of the questions he's asking and what will be the sign of your coming and also the end of the age so let's turn in our bibles and so we see that we have it also on our screen by those that join us by way of zoom turning our bibles to the gospel as recorded by matthew in chapter excuse me chapter number 24 and we want to start our reading at verse number 21 and so we ask that you acknowledge by saying amen or give us a sanctified wave when you have found your place. And I'd like to remind you that many times, you know, we trust people for a lot of things, but we should not necessarily trust people when we're reading the word of God. And so I, many times I share with you the idiom is that when I go to the doctors or to the dentist, that I always gaze on the wall to see what school they went to, not that I would know the school, not that it would make any difference, but we, what I want to know their credentials. So the same way that we don't, I don't trust a doctor or a dentist, that we don't need to trust anybody with the word of God, that we need to read the word of God for ourselves. So we find ourselves in the gospel as recorded by Matthew, um, chapter number 24, and I'll be reading under the King James Version of the Scriptures, starting in verse number 21. Chapter 24, I saw in that verse number 21, and says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be, except those days be shortened. They should no flesh be saved, but for the sake of the elect, those days shall be shortened. If then any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, 
they should deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also be the coming of the Son of Man be. And verse 28 says, And for whosoever the carcass is there, will eagles be gathered together. We have entitled our lesson tonight is The Peril to Come, part number two, The Deception. So let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, God, for who you are. And God, we're going to continue, God, to thank you, God, for what you are in our lives on tonight. Father God, we, we thank you, God, for allowing us to have our Bibles. As we open up our Bibles, God, allow us, oh God, to open up our hearts and also, God, our minds. And Father God, we ask, oh God, we're so open and also, God, while we're so exposed, that you would take this opportunity to insert your word into our hearts into our mind that we would truly know, do, and understand what the Spirit is saying unto the church. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. 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 Again, we, we, see, we see our lesson entitled, The Deception. I was reminded that about, um, I guess about 20 miles from my house is a place called the, 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 um, the Duck Decoy Museum the duck decoy museum, and they make duck decoys. And so the reason that they make these decoys is that they put these decoys in the water. And so when the real duck sees these decoys, they think it's safe to come out into the water. So they come from their safe place. They come from their hidden place to come out into the water thinking it was safe, but the hunter is deceiving them, thinking it was the safe, then he would shoot them. And so I said that to say that many times what the devil does, that he deceives you and I into coming from the place where God has placed us, where the place that God has put us, he deceives us to come out of what I call that safe place. And we're going to develop that in, in a moment so that, so that he can take advantage. Remember, the Bible says what the devil comes, what? To steal, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He comes to steal your joy. He comes to kill your testimony, and also he wants to destroy your life. And so our outline today is very, very simple. First of all, we want to look at fake news, and then secondly, we want to look at the real deal. And so we know that as we get into this whole thing of, of fake news, we know we have come out of a administration that everything that was said in a news media that they did not agree with, that wasn't um, coming into their position, they always called it fake news. But I want you to understand that whether I like it or not, if it's true, it's true. And so God did not uh, um, invite my opinion when he was writing the Bible. God did not even invite my opinion when he was causing the direction of my life to go in a certain way. But God caused those things to work together for the good of those that love God, those who are called what according to his purposes. And so we see under the fake news, but first of all, I need you to back up for just a little bit. And so have, have your Bibles open. We, we remember, we, we looked at in verse 16, I'm going to read it to you real quickly. In verse 16 of Matthew 24 it says, let them which are in Judea flee unto the mountain. So Jesus told them that, that when you see the abomination of desolation, when you see this happening, he said, flee. He said, don't go into your house. That if you're out in the field, don't go and get your coat. He said, take whatever you have, take whatever right there and run. He, he even, he said in another, in another gospel, he said, don't even go back and get your loved one, but take that and, and run and flee unto the mountain. Why did Jesus tell them to flee unto the mountain? Because that was their safe place. See, please understand this, that many times the safest place that I can be is where God sends me and where God has me. And so watch me now. And so but we, we use a phrase, especially in ministry called what? Bloom where you are planted. Mean that wherever God has planted me, then I should bloom. 
What, what does a flower do? When you plant a flower into a flower pot or into your garden, into whatever, it blooms because that's what a flower was created from the foundation of the world to do. Can I get a witness? So guess what? When God plants you and me where he plants us, where he puts us, in this case, we're looking at Israel to flee into the mountain. That's where you and I are supposed to do what God has placed in our hand, in our heart to do. Is anybody seeing that? But guess what? Guess what? Because I may not like where God has planted me. Because I may not like how things are going. And so what do I want to do? I want to transplant myself into another garden. <laughs> you know, that some, some of you ladies can testify to the fact that maybe you have them flowers in your house and maybe they're not doing well. what you do. You take and translate into another flower pot. But what God is saying to you and to me is that where he has planted, guess what? He may have me on the job and I may not be feeling the job. You, you may you, you may have a job like me, but sometimes when you get up in the morning, you feel like you're going back to the plantation. Can I get a witness? And so, and so where you, you coming up with these plans, these schemes, and saying, God, I, I, I got to find another place. I got to find another way. But guess what? Maybe God is saying that you need to bloom where you plant it. So I don't know. Maybe it's, 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 your, it's your home situation. And maybe you're not feeling one another right now. Maybe you're not feeling a neighborhood. It, 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 was, it was some time. It was a couple of years ago, and so so the reason that 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 that, that we, I brought a single house for, for versus a townhouse because I wanted to be able to park in front of my house. Can I get a witness? And so and so, and so but some of my neighbors want to take liberty and park in front of my house. I wanted to go and knock on that door. Where's your part of the mortgage? Where's your part? Because the reason that I bought this house so that I can be free to park out in front of when, 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 when I want to. So maybe I'm not feeling my neighborhood. Maybe, you know, if the truth be told, I'm not feeling the church right now. Maybe I don't like the way the things are going in the church. Maybe I don't like the way that, that, that leadership is leading us. Maybe I don't like how this is going. So what do I do? I want to transplant myself into another garden. But God is saying to flee because we're, look at the text. So when Jesus told them to go, to flee into the mountain, that's where he wanted them to go. As it been said that he commanded it, he did not stutter, he did not hem and hard. He said, flee unto the mountain. But, but watch this, watch this now. And so, so no, 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 notice what it says. And so verse 23, it says, and, and if any man shall say, lo, is a Christ. And so, so we talked about the deception. If any man shall say, lo, is a, even a fake news, they're gonna say, Christ is here. Jesus said, go to the mountain, but watch me now. It's a, it talks about false prophets and false Christ. We looked at them in verse 5, how, 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 how they're going to come in, into the tribulation era. And that these false Christ and these false prophets, they're going to come and, and they're going to kind of come up with this false religion. They're, they're this false, you know, you know, religion type of thing. And so how leading people astray. And so watch me now. I think I think we discussed this before because some people see they may lead me astray and they just don't mean and they just giving me bad advice. They don't know no better that they're trying to help me, but they end up leading. But there's some people that make up in your in their mind. I'm going to lead this person astray. I'm going to as, as Malcolm used to say, we've been hoodwinked. We've been bamboozled. We had the wool, wool run over our eyes. So, so, so what? But we see the false prophets and the, and the false Christ. They're going to come and they're going to say, see, Christ is over here. And so Jesus is saying, do, do not believe him. They're going to say he's over here. But watch me now. Watch, watch this now. And so because why? Because the devil does not want you and me in that safe place. He does not want you and me in the place that, that he has designed for us to be. Because understand, even though I may not like it, even though I'm in my safe, so-called safe place, and I feel like I'm, I'm between a rock and a hard place. I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm the Israelites. When, when they left Egypt, they had Pharaoh's army behind them, and they had the, the Red Sea in front of them. Meaning they were at the perpetual between a rock 
and a hard place. See, sometimes you and I feel like that I'm between a rock and a hard place. I feel like I feel like that. Why has God let me here? And so we, we, we use the famous phrase, you know, God wants me to be happy. And so, yes, God wants me to be happy, but my happiness never trumps his purpose in my life. My happiness never trumps his will. And so it's always secondary to me doing what God has said. And so, so I, 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 want, I, I want to look at this. So, so let's turn with me in your Bibles to, to, to the book of James. Turn in your book of James, chapter number one. And let's look at verse 16 through 17. So I want to, I want to, I want to drop, I want to drop something in your spirit on tonight. And so let's look at James chapter number one. I'm starting at verse number 14. And it says, but every man, let me pause for just a second. And so, so this, this word man, in some of your translation, it says everyone. Meaning it's not necessarily referring to the male gender of the feces, but it's referring to humankind. And so, so, so he said that every man or every person or everyone, when, when, when he is, when they are tempted, I am tempted, you know, no, he said every man, when he is tempted, he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. And verse 16 says, do not error, my, be my beloved brethren. And so let let let's unpack this for, for, for a minute. So verse 14, again, it says, every man, every person, everyone, when, when he is tempted, he is drawn away, knows by his, his lust. And so... 90, about 95, 90, 96 percent of the time in the Bible, lust is always presented in a negative fashion. But watch this now. If you break down the word, if you study the word lust, it means a strong desire, meaning that I can have a strong desire. It may not necessarily be good or bad, but really, it, if it's evil, it depends on how I try to carry it out. Can I get a witness? See, 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 I, 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 I'm so focused right now on my 401k, on me being able to retire in, in, in a couple of years. And so that's a strong desire. But watch me now. But if I feel that strong desire because I desire to have a certain amount of money by robbing a bank, that makes it evil. But, 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 but if I feel this desire by just saving and putting money away and investing, that does not make it evil. So, 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 so but understand that lust is not necessarily bad or good, but it's depending on how I carry it out, how I allow that to, to motivate my actions. And so, so again, he says, but every man, when he is tempted, he is drawn away. See, th these are what is called some, some sports terms because... And remember that during the first century, they didn't have basketball and football and, and hockey and baseball and all this other stuff. Their main sport was, was hunting. And so what, watch this now. And so when he is, this, this phrase, you know, when he is drawn away, this phrase drawn away, it, it really means being lured into a trap. And be, be, I'm be, being lured in, into a trap. And so, and so, I, I, I remember one time. I don't want to gross anybody out, but 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 I had this 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 job, and I was working in a in a, in, a, in a brigade um, headquarters. And so, because I was the lowest NCO, that they had some that they had some mice in there. And so, and so, I'm a city boy. I know a lot about mice, and so I was tasked. We're putting the mouse trap down. I was tasked with putting the putting these little mouse traps down, and and so and so what 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 I, so what what my what my supervisor told me to do. He said get some get get, get some of the, the the peanut butter or some liquid cheese and put it on the trap because because why because that, that when they see it they they will be drawn into the trap. And this is what really what James is pointing to. He says, when, they, when you're drawn away, mean, mean that you are drawn unto a trap. But, but notice what he, he goes on to say. When he's drawn away by his own lust, by his own desire, he is enticed. Meaning, see, this is when I put the, what, put the mouse, put the cheese on the mouth trap. Let me say it this way. Let me say it this way. When, when I was a young fella, 
When I was a young fella, my granddaddy used to take me fishing. He used to take me, he used to take me fishing, and then probably I don't know where we were going, but he took me into his little shop. And in the shop that, that, that they had, it was an aquarium. There was a dirt in the aquarium, and there were some worms in, in this aquarium, what, what you call blood worms. So my granddaddy went to the, went, went to the man. He, he, he paid so much money for these worms. They were like in his little carton box. And so, and so then when it came to fishing, came to put him on the hook, you see, I was squeamish. <laughs> I didn't want to touch no worms, especially when you, when you, when you put the hook on them and they started bleeding. I was done. It was over. And so I'm not, <laughs> no, I'm not doing this, you know, beat me, whip me. I'm not touching no worms with no blood on it. And so what granddaddy did, I got some grace there, they can pray. He took the worm and he put it on the hook, you know, for me. And so we get to the spot. We, we get the fishing rod. We got the worm on the hook and we put it down in the water. We put it down in the water. And so, but watch this now. But see, the fish were in what they call holes or, or pockets. And so, but the fish had a desire for the worm. The fish had a desire for the worm, and I guess the blood made it more enticing. But guess what? The fish, because they had a lust for the worm, they left their safe place. I'm going somewhere with this. So they left their safe place, but, but, but because they had so much of a desire for the worm, they did not notice that there was a hook in the worm. Because they had so much of a desire for the worm, they noticed attached to the hook was a line going up. And, and, and to the surface, why, why, why? Because, because they allowed their desire for the worm to override them coming out of their safe place. See, and this is what happened in, in our scripture where Jesus said, he told them to go to the mountain. And, and so, but, but, but yet the devil and his false prophets are going to come. See, no, Christ is over here. Jesus said, don't, don't believe me. He's in the chamber. Do not believe me. He said, why? Because the devil wants you and me to leave our safe place. He wants you and me to, to allow us to be drawn away and enticed by our desires. And as I said before, my desires may not be nothing necessarily anything evil or bad. But guess what? If, if, if my desire goes unchecked, it can lead me into a place of shipwrecking my life. Can I get a witness? But in the case of our scriptures, it can allow them to come out of this life because why? What does the devil want to do, especially in the tribulation period? He wants to destroy the Jewish people, and he wants to destroy Christians. And so, because, but, but, so if you're a Jewish believer, that's like a devil whammy for him. That, 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 that's like a combo meal where he gets his burger and his fries. <laughs> and so, and so but, but, but he said, do not believe him because he says, well, so many false Christs that are going to arise. But Jesus said, do not believe him. Why? Because he told us that you and I need to learn and quit trying to transplant ourselves. We need to learn that when God, if God tells me to go to the mountain, and maybe I'm not feeling a mountain. Maybe I'm looking at the mountain and I can look down the mountain and see where my house was. I see where my bed was and see where my TV was. But he's saying, go to the mountain. Understand that the God, everything that God does, watch this now, he does for a reason. He has a reason. He has a purpose. And so, but when he tells them to go into the mountain and flee, and so, but, but, what, but what does the devil want to do? He wants to draw them away. He wants to entice them. Because, see, that's a good thing to want to be with the, where the Lord is. The Bible said what? Absent from the body is be present with the Lord. So we all have a desire to be with God. But the thing is that, that I need to learn to obey God. The Bible says, watch this now, that my obedience is better than my sacrifice. So, 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 so I need to quit trying to transplant myself. I need to quit listening to my emotions, even listen to my desires, and, and, and not allow these things to override God. See, many times, see, that's why you and I, watch this now, it's not part of the lesson, but I'm going to throw it in there anyway. We need, to, we need to live by God's revelation, by God's word, and not by my reasoning. Because guess what? I can reason myself out of anything. I can reason myself because guess, guess what? See, 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 if the devil, you know, uses hard times, 
uses rough times. And so many times that will drive us to a place that we should not be. And so, so this is why I said in, in the beginning, I know that the governor, and I have all the respect for the governor in, in the world, he has led, he led Maryland and beautifully as far as the COVID-19 and everything, but they're talking about opening things up. And so, and so, so, so because uh, uh, we, we were getting to a good number of being vaccinated. And so, but, 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 but guess what? Why are you doing this? Because of money, because of resources. Are you doing it because it's going to be a safe thing? Since so, so you and I need to be wise as serpent and harmless as dove. And we need to learn to make these decisions. But we need to learn to, to operate, guess what, by God's revelation and not necessarily by my reasoning. Because guess what, I can reason myself. If you're anything like me, if you really want to do something, you can talk yourself into it. Can I get a witness? <laughs> you really want to, you can talk yourself into it, but we need to learn to live by God's word, by God's revelation, and not necessarily by our be able to reason ourselves out of these different things. And so, so notice, and so, so notice what, what he says. So let's turn back to our, 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 our main text here. Turn back to um, Matthew 24. And so, and so, so notice, so he said, And so starting at verse number 24, and it says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Notice what he says, for Christ, he Behold, I have told you. Behold, I have given you a warning. Behold, I have given you a heads up of what's going to happen. So don't do it. So when you hear it, don't do it. But notice what verse 26 says as we make a transition to the real deal. He said, wherefore, if, 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 if any shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber. Do not believe it. Here it is, verse 27. Here it is. Don't miss it. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So the real deal. And so so, so guess what? So, so, so Jesus is saying, look, look at this. He's saying, first of all, when I come, it's going to be quick. Secondly, when I come, it's going to be sudden, meaning there's no going to be with... Also, when I come, fourthly, it's going to be visible. And fifthly, when I come, it's going to be universal. So, so, so it's not going to be where somebody had to tell you that Jesus is in the mountain, where Jesus is in the secret chamber. But, but when we come, and so I don't look at look what it says. And so the, as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, meaning goes from east to west in the sky, meaning that everybody shall be able to see it. And so meaning that it's going to be visible to everybody. And so guess what? I, as, as I looked at this, I don't know how God is going to do it. I don't know if he's going to do it in a miraculous way, but somehow that everybody on the earth can see it. Or, or maybe he's going to use technology because as I was looking at this, he's talking about lightning and, and in the sky. And we, we know that, that, that our cell signals travel what in the sky. And so, I, and, and so now we live in a day, you know, I, I remember that this this was written in the first century, in the first century mindset, where we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have all this, we didn't have an internet. And so I don't know if God is going to use technology, or, and so we don't get it, or if he's going to do it supernaturally, but however God is going to do it, guess what? He's letting you and me know there's going to be no guesswork about it. And so some would try to suggest to you and me that that the that that, that we're in a tribulation, that, that that Jesus has already come. But guess what? The Bible is saying what? That, uh, that that it's going to be a visible thing. It's going to be quick. It's going to be universal. There's going to be no guesswork. There's going to be no him and harm. And so that it's going to be so visible. And so so again. I'm not really all that clear. The Bible's not really all that specific on how he's going to do it. If he's going to do it by, by, by technology, as we said before, now everybody's got a cell phone. And so, and so even, you know, you two of my little grandchildren, 
got cell phones. They, they, they got, they got, they got, they, they, they got cell phones and, and they, they're texting it and they're doing this stuff, even though that their parents are monitoring them and restricting them, but they still have so, 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 so if my grandchildren, two of my, two of the three of my grandchildren have a cell phone, guess what? Everybody got a cell phone now. And so, gee, and so sometimes, see, see, we got a thing at work called call them all. And so, and so if, if you would describe to this, if something goes on in the company, you'll get this text, you'll get this alert. If somebody gets hurt, you'll get this text, it gets alert. If something happens to the building where we're shutting down, we'll get this alert. And sometimes I'll, I'll be sitting on break and sometimes I, I, my phone will go off and it'll be an amber alert. And they're letting us know that some child has been abducted. Sometimes they'll describe the car or describe the person or give the age. And so, so we got, so we're getting these alerts by, by these means. And so maybe God is going to use that when, when Jesus cracks the sky. And so, but, but I don't know how God is going to do it because he does not have to limit himself to technology. But God can do it however he wants to do it. But guess what? I know that one thing is clear. That when it happens, that it will be universal. It won't be no guessing. It won't be no, nobody has to tell me that Jesus is around the corner up the street. Guess what? I will be able to see it for myself. And so, and so but guess what? So, so as we're talking about the tribulation saints, so when they're in the mountain, when they're in the safe place where God has told them, they can stay there until they see him crack the sky, until they get the alert, and, and until they get this thing. And so, and so how are God going to do about supernatural, by miraculous? And so let's turn in our Bibles. Let's drive the point at home. Let's turn to Acts uh, 1 and 11. The book of Acts chapter number 1 and verse number 11. And so it says, and which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up unto heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you unto heaven, shall also come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And so let, let me paint the picture. So remember that Jesus finished his earthly ministry and he kind of, he kind of levitates, he kind of goes up into heaven. And so they're all standing around looking at this. And so the angel appears, so why are you gazing up? He said, the same Jesus, as you saw him go up, you're going to see him go down. And so meaning that, guess what? So if I, so if they see him, nobody has to tell them that, that he's in a secret chamber. Nobody has to tell them that he's in a secret place because they're going to see him the same way that he went up. That's the same way he's going to come back down again. Is anybody seeing that? Now, let, let, let's turn to um, Revelation chapter number 1 and verse number 7. Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 7. And Jesus said, and the word says, And behold, he cometh with, with clouds. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. And so again, we see that God is painting this picture that when Jesus comes, when he comes back, that it's going to be, it's going to be, again, quick. It's going to be sudden. It's going to be visible and it's going to be universal. So God is going to do it in such a way. So guess what? So, and, and, but, but what this is saying to you and to me is that, that wherever God has us, that's where we need to do what we're supposed to do. And so don't be hoodwinked. Don't be fooled. And so we, we looked at even at the false prophets and false Christ going to rise and they're going to do great signs and great wonders, even in the tribu even the tribulation period. But now even if people has a way of doing things that can dupe you or not. That's why, guess what? We need to have our face in the book. 
We need to be studying the word of God for ourselves. And that, that's why I give you some scriptures so you can see where I'm coming from. So you can go and do the research and turn so we can be a church like the Bereans. As Paul was preaching, they were searching the scriptures to see if the thing that he was saying was true. Because guess what? Anybody that stands behind any type of sacred desk we need to evaluate them. We need to measure them by the word of God. And so not, not by their appear, appearance, not by that they have personalities, not by their charismatic, but, but guess what? It are what you are telling me is this based on the word of God. I told you before the difference between what exegesis that I pull from the scripture, what is there, but eisegesis when I put into it what is not there. And so, so many times, many times, see, 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 see we, we got so accustomed I, somebody say, tell the truth, shame there. We got so accustomed to hearing three points in a poem. And they were satisfied with hearing three points in a poem. I know that all of us have been to those church services where, where the preacher had let you know, I'm getting ready to do it now. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to do it now. And so we all get excited and we, and we all get, get, get in this emotional. I wrote, Nothing wrong with emotions. But guess what? I need to know what I'm being emotional about. I, my emotions need to be based on the word of God, based on what God is saying in my life, based on what God has promised to do in my life, based on that the God will never leave me nor forsake me, based on I have to trust the Lord with all my heart what, and lean not to my own understanding and all my ways acknowledge him, guess what, so that he will direct my path. I need to base my thing. The Bible says if I train up my child, and whether he should go, when he's old, he will not depart. See, that word old means a bearded one, meaning that when he has matured, he shall not depart. It does not mean that they won't go out into the far country, but guess what? When they are matured, the Bible said, if I've done my part, they're going to come back. They're going to come back like a yo-yo. They're going to come back like a boomerang. They're going to come back to the thing that we have deposited in them. That's why we have to be about our father's business. And and, and, and I, I want to close with um with John 10 and 27. John 10 and 27. And it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which giveth me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Notice what it says in verse 27, as we prepare to put a period here. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And so, the, the, the scripture really came to life when, when I was over in, in, in Saudi Arabia. We were over in Saudi Arabia. We, 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 my, my guys, we, were up, we got up in the morning, we were looking, and we saw these, we, we saw these two shepherds with their sheep. We two shepherds with their sheep, and each shepherd was leading their sheep. But we saw that as the shepherd continued on leading, they, they were going to collide. And so, and we were looking at, we said, there's no way that the shepherds are going to be able to maintain and keep their own individual sheep because they're going to collide. They're going to get all mixed in. They're going to get all mangled. And so they're going to be all mixed up. But, but I noticed something, Deacon Pry, as the shepherds got closer to the other shepherd, they would raise their voice. They would call out to the sheep. They would talk to the sheep. Why? Because the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And, that, and, that, and that as they heard the shepherd's voice, they followed the shepherd, even though they mingled with the other sheep. But because they knew the shepherd's voice, they followed the shepherd, and, 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 the, sh and the shepherd was able to maintain their own separate and individual flocks. See, 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 the Bible says, see, the, Jesus said earlier that, 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 that even if possible, they would deceive the very elect. But guess what? God is saying that if I belong to him, he said that my sheep, guess what? That they hear my voice. 
See, 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 what you and I have to do, we have to learn to spend time with God so that I can hear his voice, so I can determine his voice. Because sometimes, if you're anything like me, you have all these voices speaking to you. You have all these things trying to tell you that you should go this way, you should go this way, you should go that way. But the Bible says, I'm not making this up, he said that my sheep, see, if I belong to him. If, if I, I'm saved to the bone, and they say, and, and sanctified to the marrow, if I, I'm, I'm sure enough saved, 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 he said that my sheep hear my voice. He, he, said, he said, no, he said, and I know them. See, 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 many times you and I will know information about God, but, 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 but where the road meets the road, does he know us? Does he know me? Does he know you? And so I think I, I told you that, that when I was in high school, my, my term paper, I, 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 you know, you already know that in my family that basketball is a religion. And so, and so, and so, and so I wrote my term paper I made, made this super all-star team. And so, and so one, of, one of the guys on the all-star team was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And also my favorite basketball player of all times is Dr. Julius Irvin. And so, and so, and so I can tell you all types of information. I can tell you how big Dr. J's hands was. I can tell you what size, what size of shoe he wore. I knew where he went to college. I knew where he grew up. I knew the side job he had when he went to, when he went to college. I knew all this information about Dr. J. But the, but the question, does Dr. J know me? See, he doesn't know me from Adam. But, but, but many times, but many times, see, because you and I know the information, but, but notice what it says, he said, I know them, meaning that I have a relationship with them. Why? Because they belong to me. And because we have that relationship with God, then we can hear his voice. We can hear that still small voice when it tells us when everybody else is going right and it tells us to go left. When everybody is going up and it tells us to go down, when everybody else is, is, is leaving the safe place where God has told, guess what? God is saying, stay just where you are. Because why? Because he says that my sheep hear my voice. I know them. And guess what? And they follow me. And they follow me. Let us pray. Father God, we come to you right now, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you, God, for who you are. And God, we thank you, God, for what you are in our life today. God, we thank you, God, for the scripture. Let us know, God, the pearl to come. And let us know that how the devil, the enemy, is trying to deceive us on the deception. And you remind us, God, how he came to the kill, the steal, the kill, and to destroy. But guess what? You have given us life. And you've also given to us more abundantly. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. And we all say, Amen. Amen.